The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Tancho Divine, a computer science teacher, and we are in Upper Six. In the previous lesson, that's lesson 10, you were required to carry out an assignment. The assignment was or required that uh, you should explain why uh, certain techniques could not be used or were not appropriate for a situation of an enterprise in your town uh, which employed only disabled people. You were asked to analyze the system of a unit working only with uh, the dome. Uh, so you were to look at the techniques uh, you were to use uh, to carry out the requirement detection. So, if you actually got your answers right, which means if you actually identified the techniques for such an appropriate uh, situation, your answers would have involved observation and documentation because you were dealing with the DOM. So the appropriate techniques for uh, analyzing the system uh, well, of working with the with the DOM is by observation and documentation. Since the DOM cannot speak and you can't ask them questions for them to respond. The second uh, work for you to do was uh, you to look at a situation in which uh, you being an analyst were to carry out your fact-finding activities using the documents of the enterprise. You were to give one advantage and one disadvantage of the documentation method. So if your responses were correct, they will look as follows. Advantage. So little or no ambiguity is actually encountered since the written language is generally more formal and clearer than spoken language. The li limitation you would find in such a situation is that uh, it may be tedious to read the documents. Let us get into our lesson, which is the 11th lesson, titled uh, Design, Development and Testing Phases of the System Development Life Cycle. The lesson is planned as follows. We'll begin by looking at the objectives, followed by what is required to facilitate lesson, the lesson apprehension and comprehension, after which we are going to look at a real-life application on the de uh, design phase, uh, development and the testing of the system development life cycle. From there, we are going to look at concepts or facts that will help us to resolve the above real-life uh, situation. After which, we'll move on to looking at exercises which helps, I mean, which help us to find out how much uh, we could retain from what we must have covered during the lesson. We will then end up with some work or assignment which you're supposed to carry out before the uh, beginning of the next lesson in this sequence. At the end of this lesson, 
You will be able to explain the objectives of the design phase. You will be able to explain the concept of the system development. And also, you will be able to explain the various types of system testing. And finally, you will be able to state the benefits of testing a system before it is put into use. But before we get into our lesson, it's very important for you to recall the concepts or uh, you encountered when you started studying system analysis, which is one of the stages of uh, the system development life cycle, and also some notions in uh, system, uh, the system development life cycle models, which we earlier saw. So it's important for you to recall much of what we study under this. That will help us to understand the lesson. Now, the real life application consists of uh, a school that decides to implement an information system in order to facilitate the operation, uh, operations of its administration. Uh, so the, you, you, the school decides to implement an information system to help in the administration and management of relationship between staff and parents. Okay, this system will enable the storing of information also and the computation of report cards so that parents can access and follow students' performance from their homes. Now, after carrying out a feasibility study and analyze an analysis of the project, it was decided that the project is worth implementing or worth pursuing. So, you have been tasked by the management of your school, of course, to come up with a design that will be followed by the development team to build the project. You are also to explain some of the ways this system, uh, in the ways in which this system will be tested after development to ensure that it actually meets up with the requirements, the user requirements and what the project team actually wanted. To get this real-life situation sorted out or solved, the following facts are very important. We shall look at what really is the design phase of the system development life cycle. Recall that the system development life cycle is a cycle of steps or phases, or you can call them stages, that are followed in order to come up with a new system. And so it's an organized cycle of steps that are put in place uh, and followed in the course of the development of a new information system. So in this system development life cycle, we have different stages. We have already seen the uh, feasibility study stage. We've seen the uh, requirement analysis stage. And now we are looking at the design phase. So what is uh, the design phase? Actually, it is the process of defining the architectures, the product design, the modules, interfaces, and the data for a system to uh, satisfy the specified requirements. So, it is from this design that a system is actually constructed. Now, why do we carry out system design? Why do we carry out uh, the design for a system. It helps in the transformation of all the requirements, which we actually stated in the requirement analysis stage, into detailed specifications covering all the aspects of the system. Of course, it also helps uh, in the assessment and planning uh, for security risks. So, system design also uh, helps in the approval of the progress uh, made so far in the development, uh, uh, which leads to the development phase of the system. So, here you uh, look at things like uh, reviewing the project plan, you look at things like uh, uh, laying out testing plans, and so on and so forth. Below are some 
ways or you can call them types of system design you can find we have a logical design physical design architectural design and detailed design but really what are these types of designs the logical design actually pertains to an abstract it's a it's a, an abstract way of representing uh, data flow inputs and outputs of uh, to a system so it represents the input to a system and output to a system in some form of uh, uh, diagrammatic representation so here we make use of flow charts and sometimes uh, data flow diagrams to represent the design of the system the physical design relates to uh, the actual input and it actually refers to the actual input and output processes of the system so it's a kind of description of the input and output processes of the system and it focuses on how data is entered into a system how it is verified how it is processed and how it is displayed as an output so here we look at uh, input formats and the design of the forms on how uh, the forms through which data will be entered into the system that is actually put in place at this stage the architectural design is a high level design that focuses on the design of the system architecture so this takes us more into the details and sometimes it gives us the electronic structure uh, of maybe a circuit board maybe if you're designing a circuit board here at this level we we come up with the electronic uh, structure or diagram that shows us where electronic circuits appear and how they are connected with each other The next uh, kind of design there is uh, the detailed design. And of course, this follows the architectural design and it focuses on the development of each module. Now, the modules here may actually be program uh, or, or prog programming language components. The building up of programming language components or modules that are required for uh, setting up the system, as well as some detailed specification of some of the electronic components that are required or maybe that are found uh, on in the design diagram we just uh, in, in the architectural diagram we just referred to above so it takes us to a deeper level of abstraction after the design phase is what we call the development phase of the system development life cycle and take note that the design phase puts in place everything that is required for development or construction to take place because in some documentations uh, the name development the synonym to the word development is construction so here the uh, the process of building the system according to the earlier design and documents is actually uh, put in place so the system is constructed according to the outlined specifications so from what was stated in the requirement analysis uh, report and also what is laid out in the design the system is now put in place why do we actually carry out system development of course just as we have said development is actually uh, constructing or putting in place uh, developing is actually constructing the new system so at the development phase we build the system following the design in the previous uh, uh, stage of the sdlc so after the system is built it is tested so testing and integration uh, of the units into larger components takes place uh, at the development phase take note that when developing a system uh, we actually 
make use of, we, we actually develop both hardware, we make use of hardware and software components. So, testing and integration of the units uh, into larger components takes place with both the hardware and the software. So, another activity that takes place at this level of the development is preparing or the preparation of the technical environment for the system. Also, at this level, we have uh, an approval of the progress to the test phase. So after setting up the system, everything is put in place to test whether the system actually meets up with both the uh, manufacturers and users' requirements. We also decide on the coding conventions to use at this development phase. So you may have uh, different types of uh, uh, maybe coding uh, methods that exist. You have object-oriented programming. You may want to make use of uh, some object-oriented method or maybe some programming language that actually meets up with uh, what your system is all about. Maybe you want to use Python for artificial intelligence. So deciding and actually coding takes place, deciding on the language, uh, on the, uh, the coding convention and actually the coding proper takes place at this development phase. And of course, we said the system is built at this level. Now, there are actually different methods of testing a system to find out whether it actually does what it was supposed to do. But what is testing in relation to the system development life cycle? What do we refer to as testing? Testing is the investigation conducted to check whether a system matches some expected requirements. The requirements we are referring to here are those that were stated uh, by the analysts and those that were actually laid out in the design. So, investigating or finding out whether a system matches the expected requirements is what we refer to as here as testing. Now, why do we actually carry out testing? Why do we have to carry out testing in the course of developing an information system? Testing helps us to identify bugs and defects. What are bugs? Bugs are software errors. So in the course of writing out a code, you may find that uh, some error occurred somewhere and of course there are different kinds of errors. We have logical errors, we have syntactic errors and which of course need to be corrected. So the identification of these errors and maybe some defects, maybe the choice of the programming language being used was not the correct one and so on, helps us to uh, solve the problem of errors occurring in the course of the next phase, which is the implementation phase. So we identify the errors in software and the defects thereof to avoid problems occurring at the next phase. Testing also helps us to produce quality software, software that is void of errors. And a quality software actually and uh, uh, facilitates or helps uh, produces customer satisfaction because when the customer actually has a product uh, which is uh, to their satisfaction a product that doesn't uh, cause problems or may uh, require that they should be going to some repairer or maintenance agent um, uh, more than or maybe often once they have such a product they consider that as uh, it gives them satisfaction and of course they grow to 
like your product, and that's a plus to the organization or the company that owns such a system which has been developed. So, testing facilitates customer satisfaction. And when the customer is satisfied, of course, it shows that less money is spent in going for repairs or for maintenance. So you spend less in going for repairs and for maintenance. So testing helps to uh, uh, make available, it, it actually solves the problem of uh, spending much. So it is cost effective. Now, there are different methods of carrying out uh, tests in a system or in a system under development or construction. We have unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and user acceptance testing. But then, what is unit testing? Unit test is the test performed on a smaller component, and of course, here we can see the smallest component of the system, which testers can actually uh, term as a single unit. Take for an example, if the developer was actually developing a software, software consists of modules. Modules are smaller programming, uh, program units that actually solve specific problems. Now, the developer may want to actually test each unit or each module to find out if it actually solves the problem which the user wants. So, such units or such modules in a program can, uh, 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 like which rightly said, uh, can constitute uh, 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 a platform for unit testing. So when unit testing is carrying out, carried out, it's carried out on those smaller components, which, uh, like we said, the tester terms as a single unit. So it's the lowest level of testing. Next in that line is integration testing. And here, the various modules or units are linked together or combined and a test carried out on them to find out if they actually function as they are supposed to function when they are linked together. So it combines the different system modules at once and tests these modules collectively. So you may have a particular uh, software, maybe that's meant to, uh, uh, let's say, analyze uh, students' performance. And in that software, you may have a module that calculates the student's average. You may have another module that actually uh, prints a comment if the student uh, the student's mark is less than a certain number or not. So it actually prints a comment based on the student's performance. Now, when you combine those two modules together, you now find out if you enter a student's mark, does it calculate the average and also print the correct comment for that particular average. So if the two work together, then your integration testing has succeeded because you actually combined two units and carried out the tests. Now, system testing is the next in that series, which is uh, 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 where collective systems uh, are actually integrated. So you have uh, is the, the procedure is a procedure whereby a collective systems uh, are integrated and or say combined for further into single integrated system. So you may have systems which have been integrated put together to form a complete system. So once you have put every component of the system under development together, uh, the testing that is carried out to find out if it actually solves the problem that is supposed to solve according to you, the developer, is what we call system testing. Now, if the system has met the requirements that the manufacturer or you, the developer, have put in place, 
we will say that the system has passed the system testing phase. But then it has to move on to the user acceptance testing. Because you can develop a system and it actually meets your requirements, but the user uh, doesn't find it comfortable working with that system. So it can meet the requirements that were put in place for the development, but then the user still has issues with them. So the testing to find out if the user actually is able to, uh, maybe the user is satisfied with what the product does, maybe according to what he or she wanted, or maybe if it's an organization, according to what the organization wanted, is called user acceptance testing. So here customers use components of the system to see if it meets their requirements. Now, having come so far uh, in our lesson presentation, let us look at some exercise which will help us find out how much we can recall from what we've seen so far. The first question requires that we look at uh, different parts of the system when they are combined and tested together. So we carry, uh, after the development of an information system, different parts of the system were combined and tested together. Now, this type of testing is known as A, system testing, B, unit testing, C, integration testing, and D, acceptance testing. After the development of an information system, different parts of the system were combined and tested together. This type of testing is known as, if your answer was correct, then it should be C, integration testing. Question two, dash is not an objective of the design phase. Dash is not an objective of the design phase. A, approve for testing, so. B, assessment and planning for security risks. C, approval to progress to the development phase. And D, none of the above. Dash is not an objective of the design phase. Approve for testing. Assessment and planning for security risk. Approval to progress to the development phase. And D, none of the above. So if your answer was, is correct, then it is A. Question three. During the design phase of a system, the designers detail all the specifications of each module and the entire system to be developed in the next stage. Which type of design was performed by the designers? A. Architectural design. B. Physical design. C. Logical design. And D. Detailed design. So, which type of design was performed by the designers? And if your answer is correct, then it is D. Detailed design. Let's look at the second exercise. Uh, question one, which stage of the system life cycle focuses on making sure that the system is accepted by the users? Which stage of the system life cycle focuses on making sure that the system is accepted by the users? A, planning phase. B, development phase. C, design phase. D, testing phase. If your response is the correct response, then it is D, the testing phase. Exercise three, state and explain any three benefits of the system of, of testing a system. And the second question in that line requires that uh, you give the difference between the design and the development uh, phases of the SDLC. So state and explain any three benefits of system testing and the differences between the design and development phases in the SDLC. If your answers are correct, then the benefits of system testing include 
the identification of bugs and defects, making sure or ensuring product quality, and also customer satisfaction. The difference between the design and development phases of the SDLC are as follows. The design phase is actually the process of defining the architectures, product, uh, for the product designs and the module uh, interfaces, uh, the modules and the interfaces, and the data for uh, the system are specified in the uh, system requirements. Whereas the development uh, phase is the process of building the system. Having come to the end of our lesson, you will have to carry out the following assignment before the next lesson. State and explain any two types of system testing. The second question requires that you should explain what you understand by the design phase of the SDLC. And thirdly, you are to give two objectives of the development phase in the SDLC. The following references were actually used uh, to prepare this lesson. You will do well to go through them from which you will be able to get more understanding and uh, material that will help you to better understand what we've done so far. Our next lesson is going to be on the implementation phase of the system development life cycle. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 